Well, you'll just have to excuse me if I seem overly excited about this one. Last week, I drove down to Utah Air Guns in uh, Orem, Utah, picked up an Air Venturi Avenger, and I have to say, this air gun is amazing. Now I am going to be doing range reviews and other fun things, lots of stuff on the channel with this Air Venturi Avenger. I'll even compare it to some other air guns that are entry level like this. And I even want to compare it to some higher end ones and see how it performs with and against those. First, uh, I'm not doing an unboxing video on this gun, but let's just go over what it comes with. And first, a few main things that it does not come with that you see in this video. It does not come with a scope. What I've added here is a Hawk Vantage 3 to 12 by 44 millimeter objective uh, side focus scope. Great scope, love it. It does not come with a moderator. I'll talk more about that, but I added that. And it does not come with a bipod. That is just a Caldwell bipod that I put on it, really just for the sake of propping it up in this video. What it does come with, obviously, the rifle. It comes with two magazines, as well as what I already have installed here, a single shot tray. Each of the magazines are eight round because this is a 25 caliber, and I believe you get 10 round magazines if you buy it in 22 or in 177 caliber. Well, let's just sort of go over the gun. Uh, from the back, it's got a nice rubber butt pad. There is no recoil whatsoever, but I still like rubber butt pads. They give a good, nice grip on your shoulder. This obviously is the Woodstock version, and that's the biggest improvement I think Air Venturi made on this. I put off buying one of these for quite a while. I've wanted to get one to do videos with, but I would pick them up uh, in the store and hold them, and I just could not bring myself to spend the money as low as the price was. And I knew the gun shot great. I've seen plenty of reviews. You probably have too if you're looking at this video, but I just could not get over that flimsy, thin, hollow plastic stock. When I tapped on it, it seemed like I could hear an echo all the way through that stock. But the wood one has been available for a while now, and that one, in my opinion, it's, the, it's great. It's the only way I would buy it, obviously. Uh, moving forward, nice little, uh, not quite checkering, but just sort of stippling grip uh, right there on the grip and up here on the forehand. Very adjustable trigger, although right out of the box, the trigger is great. I don't know that I'll adjust it at all. The action, I want to clear up a misconception, and it may not even be a misconception. It might just be outdated information. But I had heard so many people say that the scope rails are plastic and that they screw into a plastic receiver. Maybe that was true when the gun first came out. It was only $300 when it first came out in the plastic version. Plastic version is $350 now, so maybe, you know, that's a change. But the rails, I did replace them, and I'll explain why in a moment. But these are the original rails that came on it. They're metal. But take a look at this close-up picture of them. It might be a little hard for you to see, but there is a bit of texture to them, and my scope rings would not go on straight. They sat just a little skewed and made the scope sit crooked on the rifle. I took those off and I installed these Sabre Tactical rails. I picked those up, or at least ordered them online. I got those from Air Gun Depot. Uh, Utah Air Guns where I got the rifle. Air Gun Depot is where I got those. Both awesome companies. Every time I've bought from them, I get stuff really fast. And these are just slick. Here's a little close-up picture, the best I can show you, with the scope on. And the rings just go on so nice, and the scope is sitting perfectly straight. Also, when I popped off these original rails, what I found, to my pleasant surprise, that they are, in fact, screwed into metal. Now, this is polymer out here all around the action on both sides, but inside the receiver is metal. The things on the gun that need to be metal are metal. The gun is very, very well made from what I've been able to find. Gauges. Over on this side, we've got the main fill gauge for the reservoir. I'll set my pellets down. JSB Exact King 25s are what I'm using. This fills up, uh, and I'm going to call this a pro and a con. The reservoir fills up to about 4,000, I think it's 4,351 PSI. And if you want to talk in more round numbers, it's 300 bar. The reason I call that a pro and a con, it's a pro because you get great shot count, especially depending on how the gun is tuned. You can get a lot of shots. But the con of it is it fills up to 300 bar, which means what you really need to fill this is you're going to have to have a portable compressor. I do also have a big carbon fiber tank, 74 cubic feet. 
But the problem is that also fills the 300 bar. So if you think about it, the very first time I fill the gun with that, they're going to balance between each other somewhere before 300 bar, and I'll never get one full fill. It'll just be partial fills. With a compressor, which I also have, and you'll see in the videos, I can fill this all the way up. So that's really the way to go. Hand pumps, uh, hand pumps are a thing. I have one. I have a nice one. I have a hill pump. I don't see myself pumping this up, although I do plan to do a video on trying, and we'll see if I can pump this by hand to 300 bar. Over on this other side is the gauge for the regulator. And I love that that's visible. I also don't. <laughs> and the reason why is because the regulator does have a little bit of creep in it. And I had heard that about Avengers. I've read that about Avengers. And mine, sure enough, does do it as well. But it's not bad. I would say don't let that be a reason not to buy the gun. When I say it creeps, right now I've got it tuned where the regulator is set at 2400 PSI. And when I'm out shooting, the creep is slow enough that it doesn't happen while I'm shooting. Uh, just yesterday, as of the time of this recording, yesterday I was down at Utah Air Guns doing some chronograph testing with this, with the uh, FX pocket chronograph. And all the time that I'm shooting, the, the creep is so minor it's not happening at all, at least not to affect anything in my chronograph data or point of impact. But if I let, leave it overnight, when I first filled it up at that 2400 PSI reg setting, I left it overnight, and in the morning it was about 2,700. So call it 300 PSI creep overnight, and then it seemed to stabilize there. It never got above that, that 2,700 PSI. So when you go out to the range or when you go out hunting with this gun, uh, maybe just fire a shot off or dry fire it just to clear that extra pressure out of the plenum, then you're fine. Then it'll just settle to where you actually set it, and what I found so far, then it doesn't move again the whole time you're out shooting. A very, very tunable gun. Now, I'll be honest... I love air guns. Uh, if you've watched the channel, you know I've been into them for a few years since my dad got me into them, but I never was tuning them. Uh, I'm having the pleasure of living very close to Utah air guns. They've tuned guns that I've bought for me, but with the Avenger, I decided, all right, time to be a big boy and learn how to tune the gun, and they make it very uh, easy to do. Down here on the bottom of the stock, you can see that uh, brass-colored flathead screw. That is your regulator adjustment and that other little adjustment there is where you can use an allen key to degas the gun i believe it's a three millimeter the allen key and when you adjust the regulator to increase it you just turn it counterclockwise and you can do that anytime but if you decrease it you cannot crank it down when it's under pressure so you have to completely degas the gun let every bit of pressure out and it can take a little while to drain it so a little bit of a pain moving that up and down you have to degas every decrease and then you can increase it just increase it in very small increments so that you don't have to decrease it too much. But this has been a very tunable gun. And speaking of the tuning, I'm just learning this, and I've got the regulator set at 2,400 PSI, the hammer spring, I backed it all the way out counterclockwise, and then I turned it one and three quarters turns in. And that's what I worked my way up to. But I tried it at different increments along the way. And take a look at this screenshot from my FX Chronograph app. The average velocity at this tune that I'm getting on this gun is 864 feet per second. That is not where I want it. I'm going to continue to tune the gun, get it up a little higher, maybe around 885, 890. But that's a spread of four feet per second in that shot group. Four feet per second and a standard deviation of 1.5. This is supposed to be an entry-level PCP. That is phenomenal performance. I can't wait to see how much more I can play with it and see if I can get it even better than that. But even if I don't, I do want to bring that velocity up. Um, another improvement that I've seen over the earlier versions of this, this shroud, I didn't like when I saw these before and then when I've seen them in reviews, that to take it off, you just unscrewed a set screw and then it just pulls off. This one doesn't do that. It's obviously a metal shroud and it's threaded on to the receiver much, much better in my opinion has a barrel band on the shroud, which I love. Uh, even on my FX Dreamline, I didn't like just the free floating. I put a barrel band on that, like it much better. And if you're just shooting off the bench, there are advantages to floating barrels, but this is such a good gun to take out in the field. And if you're getting in and out of the truck or something, you bump the barrel on the door. It's nice to have that band so you're not getting point of impact shifts, at least not as much. Let's move up forward even more. But first, actually down here, we've got another Picatinny rail that did come with the gun, and I just put the bipod on it. Also, sling stud front and back down there. One of my favorite things on this gun, right here. Built-in male foster fitting. I don't know why 
All the PCP makers don't do that, especially when this one can be made at the price point that it is. Woodstock's around 430 bucks, uh, American, at least the time of this recording. And you just hook your fill source on there. I hate when I have to carry around a fill probe. I even have a nice high-end FX rifle where I have to carry a fill probe for the thing. And the gauge on that rifle, the reservoir gauge, same with on my Gamma Urban, are right on the end of that. Not only is that not as convenient, it's a safety thing. If you want to look at the gauge straight on, you're pointing your rifle at your face so that you can see your gauge. So thank you, Air Venturi, if you happen to see this video, for a built-in fill port, uh, port, but also a gauge in a safe location where we're not pointing guns at ourselves just to look at the thing. Now up here, you can see that the shroud extends farther than the reservoir. <coughs> Normally it doesn't, and if you're wondering why this does, it's because I actually added a Donny FL adapter to this. Here's a picture of what the rifle looked like without it, and that's probably more what you're used to with Air Venturi Avengers. And then this just threads right on. Here's a close-up look of that adapter. And then this is a Donny FL Tonto moderator. Yesterday when I was shooting this at Utah Air Guns, I did not have the moderator on it. And it was pretty loud, uh, not ear protection necessary type loud, but loud enough, uh, I wouldn't call it backyard friendly in a place where I live. I live in, you know, suburb type area. And I was shooting it, and I asked one of the gentlemen at Utah Air Guns if they might have a used um, Tonto moderator. I could just test drive, try out, see if I liked it. They're great down there, awesome customer service. They grabbed one right away. I popped a moderator on here. I took one shot and I told him, you're not getting it back, ring me up. <laughs> I wanted it. That's about a hundred bucks uh, for that particular moderator, but amazing, amazing difference. And in the future, when I do more videos out on the range, I'll show you what it sounds like with and without. So that's just sort of an overview of the gun. I showed you the chronograph results I'm getting. And once we get the scope, I'll zero it in. Once I find the tune that I really do like, uh, we're going to go out and have some really lots and lots of fun uh, range testing this. Uh, again, comparing it to some other guns. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Not only does it help my channel grow, which I really, really appreciate, but it also lets you be there to get all the information I gain about these air guns as I get it. I'd like to bring you right along with me. Air guns have just been such a fun new thing for me. I've been a rifle uh, shooter and a handgun shooter. Firearms, I mean... My whole life, I make my regular living as a firearm instructor, but I'll tell you, air guns are where it's at. So please hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to cl click that like button down below. That's another way to help the channel grow. And if you look in the description, you'll see where to find me on social media. Hope you enjoyed this look today at the air gun, or excuse me, the Air Venturi Avenger improvements they've made to it and upgrades I've made myself to mine. And I'll be back with you again. Thank you so much for watching.